Thank you for selecting the Pulse Feeder Conductivity Cooling Tower Controller for your application. This video is intended to familiarize you with the Microvision controller. Please refer to the detailed information in the installation manual that was provided with your controller and always adhere to all local, state, and national codes. The front panel features an LCD display, two up-down arrows, dual function buttons used to move the highlighted select box and to increase and decrease values, plus two soft buttons below the screen. The buttons function appears above them on the screen. There are also four LEDs that illuminate when the relay for its function is energized. This is how the home screen appears during normal operation, when there are no alarm conditions. If an alarm condition occurs, for example no flow, this message will appear on the screen and the four LEDs will begin flashing. The home screen returns automatically after five minutes if no buttons are pressed after entering a menu. Now let's look at the status screen. Press the menu soft button. The status screen shows the controller's real-time data. This screen can be used to log the amount of time a relay was energized since it was last reset. It displays the amount of water registered by the water meter. It also registers the time in hours that the four relays were energized since they were last reset. The probe's temperature and the last error are also displayed. Press the back soft button to return to the home screen. Press the menu soft button. The configure menu allows you to set the time and date, HOA outputs, water meter, etc. The settings menu allows access to the conductivity, inhibitor feed, and dual biocide feed parameters. Since configure is highlighted, we can just press the select button to enter this menu. Let's select date time, then set date. To enter the date, use the up-down arrows and the right arrow soft button. Hit enter, then OK, we're set. Arrow down to set the time. You can change the date format if you want. You can also change the clock format. Once these entries have been made, press the back button, HOA relays. The HOA output menu allows one to set the control for the four output relays. This is useful for servicing your pumps or troubleshooting electrical problems. Press select. Three relays are displayed. To see BioSide B, arrow down. Since BioSide B is highlighted, let's select that relay. The auto mode is the default setting. To test the relay, arrow down to on five minutes and select. The BioB relay will energize for five minutes or until you select off. Once you have finished testing, return to the auto mode. Now we will cover the water meter settings. Press the back button and arrow down and select water meter. The first menu selection is meter type. Press select and you'll see both dry contact and hall effect. If you have a dry contact style, press select and then enter the number of gallons per contact using the arrow and soft buttons and press enter. The unit of measure can be changed. We'll cover that later. Select Hall Effect and you'll see the screen to enter your K factor. Press Enter and OK to return to the water meter menu. Arrow down and select units. This screen allows you to change to liters if you wish. Press back and select totalizer. This screen displays the current amount of water the controller has counted. You can reset the totalizer from this menu. Press back and return to the configure menu. Besides English, the Microvision has two other languages. And press the select button, Spanish and Portuguese. 
Simply use the arrow buttons to highlight your selection. Arrow down and select drum levels. The Microvision has four drum level inputs, one for each pump. To make your selection, highlight it and press enter, and the screen will display a check mark. Note that refilling the drum may cause the pump's relay to energize without warning. The next section in the configure menu is the display dampener. This setting allows you to select how often the actual conductivity reading is updated on the home screen, but it also dampens the controller's response to sudden changes in conductivity. To access the display dampener from the configure screen, find and select it. You can increase the number of seconds using the arrow buttons. The controller takes a conductivity reading every second and this value causes the controller to average the readings, hence slowing down the control functions. The microvision is normally installed on cooling towers that use a rising set point. However, you can change the set point to falling in the configure menu. From the configure menu, scroll down to rise fall and select it. To change the mode, simply make your selection to check your mode. The contrast of the display can be adjusted. This is also found in the configure menu. Scroll to find contrast and select. Use the up-down arrows to adjust the contrast setting. The microvision can be password protected. This feature is found in the configure menu. Scroll down to password and select it. You'll see that zeros are normally displayed. Setting this to anything other than four zeros will enable the password protection. The code will be required to access the configure and settings menu. To disable the password, return the code to zeros. If you do not know the password, you'll have to call our technical department for help. Please have the controller in front of you when you call. A tool for checking the operation of the microvision in real time is the troubleshoot screen. Find it by scrolling down and selecting it. Displayed is the flow switch status, the four drum level switch statuses, the water meter status, the probes, conductivity, and temperature reading. It also shows the revolving week number and the day of the week used in biocide programming. We'll cover that later. And lastly, the clock seconds. While the screen is displaying information, the controller is still functioning normally, and the relays could energize without warning. The controller's software version is found in the configure menu. This information may be required for any possible service issues. Arrow down to software version and select it. The version should now be displayed. The controller can be reset to the factory default values at any time. This can be done through the factory reset screen. Of course, be absolutely certain that this is your desire before performing a reset. The unit will prompt you for a decision whether to proceed or not. If yes, press OK, then enter 9999. Using the buttons, then press enter and then OK. There is no way to retrieve previous parameters. The unit is now set to factory default values. From the home screen, press the menu button and arrow down to settings and select. Connectivity is already highlighted, so press select. The connectivity menu allows you to enter your set point, differential, calibrate the probe, set alarm values, and 4 to 20 milliamp output parameters. The set point is highlighted, so go ahead and select it. This is the connectivity value where a bleed function will begin. Use the up and down arrows to enter your set point value, then press the arrow button to change places, and then press enter and OK to save the setting. The differential setting controls when the bleed function stops. For example, if you set your set point to 1200 and your differential is 100, the bleed function will begin when the conductivity is 1200. Assuming you're in a rising set point type, 
it will stop when it falls to 1100. The bleed relay has a limit timer so you can set the maximum amount of time the bleed output can stay energized before a bleed limit alarm is reported. The limit timer, when exceeded, only reports an alarm. It does not turn off the bleed relay. If the next bleed cycle completes without alarm, the alarm will clear itself. And use the arrow buttons to enter hour and minute values. Setting the value to zeros disables the timer function. Then hit enter and OK. Probe calibration. Some important information to remember. The conductivity probe is very sensitive to temperature changes. Always allow the probe to adjust to the temperature of your test solution or sample for approximately 10 minutes. Only use a temperature compensated calibration meter for calibration. It's always a good idea to calibrate your probe as close to the set point value as possible for accurate control. From the conductivity menu, arrow down to the probe cal and select it. You will see the probe's temperature displayed and the conductivity value in micro siemens. Use the arrow buttons to enter the current conductivity value, then hit enter and OK. From the conductivity menu, arrow down to select alarm set point and press select. The track set point is already highlighted, so select it. Simply enter the value here using the arrow buttons, then hit enter and OK. This one value is used for the above and below alarm set point. The other alarm type is independent. Arrow down to independent set points and select it. Use this type if you want to specify a different upper and lower conductivity value for alarm reporting. The first screen is the low value. Simply enter the low value here using the arrow buttons and hit enter and OK. Then the high screen value will appear. Enter the high value here using the arrow buttons. Then press enter and OK. Then press back to return to the calibration menu. The microvision has a 4 to 20 milliamp output that can be used to remotely monitor the conductivity value. To use this option, the high and low range of conductivity values must be entered. For example, if you set the low range for 500 and the high at 2000, when the conductivity value is 500, the output signal would be 4 milliamps. When the conductivity is 2000, the output will be 20 milliamps. To enter these parameters, from the conductivity menu, arrow down to 420 milliamp and press select. The adjust range is highlighted. Simply enter the 500 here using the arrow buttons. Then hit enter and OK. Then the high range will appear. Enter 2000 here using the arrow buttons. Then hit enter and OK. Arrow down to Cal output and select. The 4 to 20 milliamp can be fine-tuned to compensate for uncalibrated downstream meter and displays. The low 4 milliamp value screen will appear and this value can be fine-tuned here using the arrow buttons. Then the 20 milliamp value will appear. This can also be fine-tuned using the arrow buttons as well. From the settings menu, press the enter button and arrow down to the inhibitor and select it. Using the up arrow, highlight pulse timer and select it. The first thing is to set the feed time. This is the amount of time in minutes and seconds you want the inhibitor to feed when the water meter accumulator reaches its target. Use the arrow buttons to enter the limit time, then hit enter and OK. This will bring you back to the inhibitor menu. Next we'll set the accumulated volume of water that you want to accumulate prior to the start of inhibitor feed. When accumulator set is highlighted, select it and use the arrow buttons to enter the number. Then hit enter and OK. The accumulator count is the current running count of the water meter. To see this, highlight accumulator count and select it. 
You can clear this by pressing the reset button and the OK. Press the back button to return to the menu. The microvision can be configured as a bleed and feed type of controller. To set this we will use the inhibitor limit timer. In this mode the inhibitor relay will energize when the bleed function is running. If this time is exceeded the controller will go into alarm and the inhibitor relay will de-energize. From the inhibitor menu highlight and select limit timer. Set the limit time in hours and minutes. Arrow through, press enter and OK. The cycle timer mode sets the inhibitor to feed a percentage of a time period. For example, if you want to feed 6 minutes every hour, you would set the cycle time to 60. From the menu, select cycle time and enter 60 minutes. Then hit enter and OK. Then set percent to 10. Then hit enter and OK. So 10% of 60 minute cycle is 6 minutes. The inhibitor will feed 6 minutes every hour. The last inhibitor mode type is percent post bleed. This timer keeps track of the amount of time the bleed relay is turned on. When the bleed shuts off, the inhibitor begins feeding for a percentage of the bleed time. This timer also includes a limit timer to prevent overfeeding. Highlight and select percent post bleed from the inhibitor menu. Then select percentage. Now enter your value using the arrow buttons. Hit enter and OK to return to the menu. Next select the limit time in hours and minutes and press enter and OK. To disable this function, set the time to zeros. From the inhibitor menu, highlight and select biotracking and select it. Skip will skip an inhibitor feed cycle if a biocide happens to be feeding. Pause will delay the inhibitor from feeding until the biocide feed cycle is completed, then it will feed. Selecting none will feed inhibitor regardless of what the biocide feed cycle is doing. Please note that if any inhibitor feed cycles were paused or skipped, they will not be added to the next inhibitor feed cycle. From this menu screen, just use the arrow keys to make your selection, then press the back button. Note that all biocide programming also applies to biocide B. From the settings menu, select biocide A. Highlight days slash weeks and press select. The first screen is days. Select the biocide start days by using the up and down buttons. Move the cursor to the right or left using the lower buttons. The day will flash as the cursor is moved to each setting. The flashing on or off text indicates whether the current setting is on or off. If a day is highlighted or has a black backdrop, that particular day or week will have a biocide feed. The week number is seen at the bottom right. When you are finished setting the days, press the enter button and the week screen will appear. All of the previous instructions also apply to the week screen. Go back to the biocide menu, arrow down and select start times. Once you select start time, use the arrow buttons to enter the hour and minute you want the biocide cycle to start. Repeat this process for up to four different start times. Now set the feed time. Highlight and select feed times from the biocide menu and enter the hours and minutes that you want the biocide to feed with each start time. The next option we'll cover is pre-bleed. There will be two settings, pre-bleed time and minimum conductivity value. From the biocide menu, highlight and select pre-bleed. Now enter the pre-bleed time in hours and minutes using the arrow buttons and then hit OK. Next enter the conductivity minimum value you want your conductivity to reach before the bleed cycle finishes and biocide is fed. Do this by using arrow buttons. Press enter and OK to return to the biocide menu. If you want the bleed relay to be locked out for a period of time after a biocide feed cycle, you can enter that time in the bleed lockout screen. Highlight and select bleed lockout in the biocide menu. 
enter the time in hours and minutes using the arrow buttons, and then press enter and OK. This video was a brief overview on how to program your microvision. If you have additional questions, please contact your local sales representative, visit our website at pulsatron.com, or call our tech support 1-800-800-8800.